Um, so those were so-called build errors, where it can't even get it to the point where the model is going to run. The bigger issue is is uh, debugging when the model is is running, but something goes wrong. Maybe things don't appear as you expected them. Maybe they appear in the wrong color. Maybe you get a an error like a box pops up and it says null pointer exception. Maybe you get the model just dying suddenly. We're dealing here with cases where failures occur of one sort or another. It doesn't match what um, we think a vehicle should definitely be. And we're trying to identify underlying faults. And the thing that's tricky about this process is that the failure doesn't directly point you to the fault. You have to go search often. You have to go sleuth to find the underlying fault that gave rise to the failure. So the failure is very visible sometimes in the model crash or it won't run or supporting values that are patently impossible. Um, so a Gregor, for example, I talked about their recurrent problem of carcasses getting up and walking. So the, the, the dead deer, you know, got out to sort of walk across the landscape. Um, or maybe people or deer are moving across the surface that should be impassable, like a winter during summer. Um, and the, the challenge here is that in a complex model, ABM is being particularly rich in this regard. Often we're expecting surprises, we're anticipating surprises, we hope for surprises, we hope for emergent behavior, not what we anticipated. And occasionally, well, not occasionally, quite frequently there's a question, well, something's weird going on. Is that a bug or is it a feature? In other words, is it, is it actually <coughs> emergent behavior we just didn't expect? Um, so there may be things that we consider impossible, but which are in fact logical consequences of the model structure. But there's other cases where it's a result of something silly, like we forgot to reset a variable um, in, in reporting something, or something along those lines. Um, so some model surprises reflect mistakes in our implementation. Um, some, some reflect sort of hidden consistencies um, between what we intended the model to do and, um, in, in, in the world. Um, some are discoveries about what could happen in our world. But we're concentrating here on these mistakes in our implementation. Maybe we did something silly, like, who, can anyone tell me the difference between this first thing and the second thing? <laughs> well, OK, for someone with less experience, I appreciate your enthusiasm. Whereas this is taking some of these and dividing by. So this is a notion that we call precedence in, in some I'm background in language design and computer language design. And, and this is an issue of precedence. Which, which of these operators divide or plus has greater precedence or which kind of goes first? Um, the meaning of this, ladies and gentlemen, this may look like A over A plus B, but it's really A over A plus B. So I'm sure this is as long as A is not zero, it's one plus B, okay. um, which may not be what you intended. Maybe you intended conceptually this, A divided by the sum of A and B. But what you put down, it, it, you intended one thing, but it meant, given the definition of Java, it meant something different. Okay. And this is a common sort of bug. Yes, Scott? Yeah. And the interesting part is that the only way that the, that, that will actually cause the model to crash is if A is zero. If, a, if, if, if B is non-zero at any time, then A over the quantity A plus B will return a correct value generally zero if A is zero. But in the first case, you have A over A plus B, and A is equal to zero, it will throw a divide by zero error, which actually is more useful to you. Yep. Not even though it's not intended, because it will actually throw an error and say this is what caused the error, and you might be able to find it. So, you know, this is, you know, you don't want to do that, but even over runtime errors, 
want to know as soon as possible if there's something wrong with the model. You want a model that's faulty to fail as soon as possible so you can recognize that it's faulty so you can fix it. So it's like if you have early stage cancer, you want to know it as soon as possible. You don't want it to just remain hidden and, and go on, you know, just fine. You, you want to know about it. It's a painful thing, but knowing about it sooner will let you grapple with it and critically will prevent you from, you know, drawing conclusions from the model, so it's will have to be totally re-examined once you go back and, and, and fix the model. So we're, we're dealing with, with this sort of thing. And another thing would be, you know, if you misunderstand how guards and rate transitions so a lot of these, these errors have to do with also learning sort of uh, how any logic uh, works. So what is debugging? Debugging is the process of finding or removing faults from our programs based on observations of failures or aberrant behavior. And, a, and a, the, often the hardest part of this is going from the failure, you see something go wrong, to finding out what's possible. That's the slew thing. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it's worthy of Sherlock Holmes, what you have to do. Um, so in my youth, uh, when I was working as a professional software developer in the C language, I remember chasing one, one defect for two days. Um, it, was a, it was a loose, loose pointer. Uh, and uh, this was back in the days where heap checkers were less, uh, less sophisticated. And it was a Heisen bug. You'd start it with a so-called debugger as a tool, and it would go away. And, and you'd run it directly. It would be there. And, and um, uh, debugging is is an art. It's something which differs. Uh, different people's ability to pursue debugging can differ by an order of magnitude, by a factor of 10 times how quickly they can zero in. But there's no magic here. It's a process of systematic sort of exploration, hypothesizing, and I'll give you some suggestions. So the best debugging strategy is, is, is so-called defensive programming, um, or excuse me, uh, offensive programming in getting, uh, avoiding problems uh, by, by revealing them early and defensive programming, eliminating the chance for problems coming in. Uh, an example of a defensive programming technique would be naming things really, really clearly, so you don't misunderstand what it means. Uh, be very, being, uh, labeling things, for example, variables as to the time you make the um, uh, so, so if you're measuring things in days in one part of the model and, and uh, you know, per, per week and another, that's very, very clear from the variable name. That would be an example of, of that. Um, offensive programming includes things like assertions, the use of assertions, and we'll be talking about that. And the idea here is to make, make a program that's faulty fail as soon as possible. Using assertions is something that declares explicitly what our assumptions are in the model, and if those assumptions are false, it will fail and will be alerted to it as soon as possible. Okay. Um, right. Um, so Wintrell early on had talked about, uh, earlier on Wednesday had talked about um, aspect uh, J, and this is a way to, to automatically instrument and code to, to trace, for example. But this is the basic debugging approach I want to advocate. Um, so often the key to finding where problems lie in your program. So something's going wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, the very first thing you should when something big is going wrong, you know you're going to have to come down and so that. I would suggest that you save. So you can could, you could explore a little bit if it's something really obvious, but don't change it. If you're going to change something, save a new copy of your model. Save a copy of your model so that you don't have to worry that it will damage the real underlying model. So, so save, save the model and then save a copy of it that's for debugging, say, you know, for debugging the date or whatever. Um, so um, I'm going to actually put that in here as the very first line. So save a copy of your model just for debugging. And the idea here is that we are going to modify this, be able to modify with abandon this modified version of the model. <coughs> and you're going to have confidence you can go back to the, to the true version at any point. Okay? Um, so you don't have to worry that you're damaging something with the model. We are going to to simplify the error occurrence as much as possible. Um, and we are going to go through and form, if, if you can early on, even uh, you could rip out pieces of the model, get rid of a bunch of things that you think are unlikely to be contributing to this error. And, and the 
idea here would be to keep to, to throw away pieces that you think are unlikely to be contributing to it to narrow down all the sets of things that may be contributing to that error. So if you think that this error is probably caused by death in the model, that deaths in the model are somehow causing problems for the people still living because maybe they have um, they've sent messages to a dead person or, or, or something, then you can turn off death and see if the model uh, see if the model still misbehaves. So systematically disable or rip out components of the model that are that are um, causing causing problems. So to locate this fault source, um, you're going to rip out whole areas of the model to see if simple conditions um, see the simplest conditions that reproduce it. Um, so before that, you sometimes simplify the error occurrence in the sense of wanting it to appear sooner. So if you have an error that takes you know, an hour to reproduce itself or takes 10 minutes. See if you can tweak the model parameters so it occurs much sooner. Like so it could occur in 30 seconds, something like that. This will really speed the whole process up. If you don't have to wait 10, sec 10 minutes for the error, to, uh, the error to come back, or you, you don't have to wait five hours. Um, so here, you may want to tweak the parameters to make it occur as frequently as possible, but to zero in on where the problem is, you're going to have some hypothesis for what's going on, and um, and uh, you may rip out pieces that that have nothing to do with it, and see if the error is still occurring. You're able to do this because it's a copy of the model, it's not your original model. And at some point, you'll get it down to a point where if you rip out any further piece, it's it's disappearing. It's not occurring anymore, and that will often give you a strong clue as to what it involves where to start looking, okay? Um, you preferably record what you've done as, 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 as the, every step of the process. Okay, we took out this thing, took out that thing, because you may have to reflect back in it to see, you know, where did, the, where did this error first disappear earlier? I don't clearly remember. Um, so there's a loop here. You analyze, you sort of look at what's occurring and form a hypothesis about what may be, be causing this. And then you may have some thought about, okay, um, so maybe I hypothesize that this is something to do with um, um, these two different types of agents interacting. So you might uh, say, okay, um, one way to sort of let shed uh, light on that hypothesis would be to only have one of the agent types in there. You know, suppose you have two agents. You have person agents and dog agents. Maybe you're interested in understanding how Walking your dog influences people's obesity levels. Um, it's not a crazy thing. Um, there's a high correlation between owners' obesity levels and dogs' obesity levels. And um, uh, dogs are one of the uh, a substantial source of physical activity in some larger cities. Um, going needing to go walk the dog. So here, maybe your, your hypothesis <coughs> is that it has something to do with the dog and person uh, interaction. So maybe you want to turn off dogs. So there's no dogs in the model. There's only people without dogs. Does the error disappear? If so, um, if you only have dogs and you have no people, okay, would the would the error disappear? Um, could you turn off uh, could you turn off the behavior of them going up for walks, for example? So you're going to try to you're going to try to come up with a hypothesis for what may be causing. Maybe it has something to do with this. You're going to try to in the model mechanisms, either rip things out or or disable explicitly things by setting a rate to zero, for example, or by having nobody in a certain population that could shed light on this, and then think more about the defect. And um, if you and, and you'll iterate through this process. If if you make no progress on one on one hypothesis, you might want to try another hypothesis and investigate that. You might want to study the code. You might want to produce that model documentation from any logic and look over all the code just so you're sure what's there. And you might want to get another set of eyes here. So you iterate this loop of hypothesizing, determine how to pursue a hypothesis, and, and uh, taking action to do that successively <coughs> simplifying the model until you can, until you zero in on the source of the problem. If you 
can narrow it down significantly, it'll make it much easier for someone else to look at it and sort of uh, comment on what the problem might be as well. Um, so here we're zeroing in on here. Now, some of the, the data that we use for, for hypothesis, coming up with hypothesis, we'll see that any logic gives you automatically. So when there's a failure that occurs, for example, it will give you some information about where it's occurring that you'll be able to use, and I'll show you that in a minute. So following this whole process, after you slew something down, look for similar errors. Like, how did this error come in? What was the underlying issue that led to this error? What other errors might it have led to? To figure, having said some understanding about what it is about your process that left you vulnerable to this, you might want to invest in changing that part of the process. Maybe it was that you didn't read the logic documentation close enough. Maybe it's you didn't really understand how action charts worked. Maybe it was that um, you're confused about the relationship between um, uh, between a, um, a transition and the guard, and you need to get more advice on this. And you want to you want to invest in kind of learning learning about that. So let's let's talk about um, uh, about some some components of this. So. The key component is often localizing the problem. Figure out where in the model it is. And I'd like to show you um, how, this, um, how this appears in any logic. I, um, so uh, I'm just looking here um, because uh, if, if I already have uh, a, a screen on this. Let's go, I'm going to go to ABM model with birth death. And I'm going to cause a runtime error to occur here, OK? Um, I'm going to um, uh, I am going to uh, set it so that every um, uh, every year people have a birthday event. So I'm, I opened up person, I dragged in an event here, and I'm going to have a birthday event for people. Okay, birthday event, and um, what I'm going to do is to um, uh, print out uh, my age. So um, so I'm going to do trace ln of um, you know my age is, and I'll do this dot get age. Um, excuse me. Um, uh, I thought it was called get age, um, but I must be wrong. Okay. So if I did this, this would be an example of a, of a build problem. It would it would say uh, I don't know where get age is. So a person's age is given by what? Um, it's, uh, it is given by, um, I was pretty sure we had continuous age in this model. So um, where, where is this? Um, so we use this quite a bit. Um, so fertility rate by age, uh, report children. Okay, uh, there it is. Current current age. I put it in capital letters. Okay, so let's let's go back and, and uh, click on this. Oh, this is an example where it puts this um, puts us into this um, to this window up here. You'll notice. Um, so uh, it's actually current age. Now I ran afoul of of Java's uh, conventions here. It really should be lowercase c here, um, but uh, it's actually still still experiencing problems here. Oh, I forgot the extra close paren. So that was an example of where it popped me into this upper window here. Um, okay, so um, I just did that. And uh, this should work actually OK by itself. But let's suppose I were to say I want to report my mother's age as well. So my mother's age is, and I'll say the mother's age dot current age. Okay. Um, OK, so if I run this model right now, uh, what we'll see happen is uh, a, a so-called runtime error. It was fine building it. It didn't realize anything was particularly wrong here. But I run it, and I'll get this thing pop up. It says null pointer exception. OK, it's telling me something is wrong. It says exception during the discrete event evolution uh, execution. Those who are in the Java tutorials will know that I, I mentioned exceptions at one point. They're a way of sort of saying something unusual has occurred. You need to go fix it. Um, and generally, they can delegate up 
um, until someone fixes it. No one fixes it. It will put it out in this in this button. So this is the information that's printed out for me by any logic. And ladies and gentlemen, this is this information may seem singularly puzzling. In past versions of the boot camp, you'll find lectures of me talking about how to systematically use this. So this is what's called a call stack. So this thing called oh, so this thing called this thing called this thing called this thing called this thing. And this is telling me the location where the error occurred in the Java code. It says it occurred at line 281 of this Java code that was generated from my model. If I click on that, I can actually see what that Java code is. It's occurring here. Okay. Um, it moreover tells me something about what's going on, a null pointer exception. Now, people within this uh, boot camp may recall what a null value is. Who can tell me what a null value is? What's a null value? Sorry? Yes, so it's a reference to nothing. It's, it's not a reference to any predicted thing. It's specifically designated to be a reference to nothing. So, so it's, um, it'd be like saying, you know, uh, I have no dog, uh, so if maybe we associate people with dogs. I have no dog, and therefore I, my dog would be listed as, as null. Your dog might have a reference to you know, a Dalmatian or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, right? um, um, so, so here, um, what this is saying is there was some sort of problem with a null, a null reference. And the most common problem with these is you try to do something with it. You try to ask it for some information. Here it's actually pointing to the specific line. And you got to avoid getting thrown off and all flummoxed because it put you into this code that you don't know rec what it is. Does anyone recognize what 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 is this code? Which of this code did we write? Which of this code was written by us? These two things were written by us as part of that, as part of that um, transition. This is actually is sort of the part of this event, um, and this is what it turns that event into. It's highlighting the particular line where this occurred, and what is the what is the obvious reference that's used in the line that could be null, that could have a value that's that doesn't refer to any one particular thing. Where in this where in this line is there something that's a reference? Uh, yes. So we're using that on mother. So mother here is is a reference, and we're asking that reference what's your age on this same particular line. So that's that's suspect. Thing having to do with with mother there, um, and it lends some credence to the idea that it it, it it may be something to do with this this requesting information about the mother. So if I wanted to do this um, to sleuth this down, what could I do? Well, first of all, it's put me here, but I need to go find the corresponding thing in person. Unfortunately. If I select it uh, over here and I go to my birthday event, I'll find those lines of code again. How, how would I find them in general? Well, I could search for them. I could search for, for them using that search functionality I showed you earlier. I could, after all, these are pasted directly from what we told it. So I could do search replace. I could go search for that. It would tell me where they are. Okay, so they're here. Okay, that's, that's where that code came from that it plopped me in the middle of. So it's something to do with this line. Now, one thing I could do is I could comment out this line, for example. Um, I would save a version of my model separately. I'm not going to do that uh, at the moment. But I would save a version of the model because before I modify it, I want to save it. But after I saved it, I know I, can, I could change it willy-nilly. If the problem goes away totally, I can go back... Um, to the um, to the earlier model version and and see which is the simplest change that would make it go away. 
here I can I can X this out and then I could see, hey, can I, first of all, will the model still build? Yeah, it will build. Now could I run it? Will that error occur still? Suppose I run it now with that line X'd out. So I'm suspicion, suspicious that it's only that line that's the problem. Now it seems to run just fine. Okay, so now let's see if maybe we could, now that we think we probably, uh, probably um, we've got reason to think of what it is, let's, let's see if this, if mother is indeed true. So if we put in there, so if mother equals null, then Traceln, um, we have a null mother. Um, we have no mother. Um, okay, so so here we're putting in something to test our hypothesis. Okay, maybe the problem is that mother is sometimes null, and and we could put this here, and we're going to run it, and there it's the error message. And ladies and gentlemen, just before the error occurred, what's going to happen? What's going to be there? Do you think? Um, there's uh, there's a thing that says we have no mother, so that's a sign that we're getting to that point and we have a mother who's null. In other words, that's going to cause problems here. Now we could try to fix this. So we could say, well, if we don't have a mother, if this is what we want to do, if we think about it, and we say, okay, there's some cases where people have no mother listed, and we think about it more, and we say, oh yeah, you know, people in the initial population when they were first created, they don't have a mother because we don't set them up to have a mother in that same population. Um, or maybe there's cases of people whose mothers have died or something. Um, but we could, we could think about how we want to handle this. Maybe if mother, we only print out the mother's age if, if we have a mother, if we have a mother on reference. And we could try fixing it that way. And we could try running it that way. And, and we could see, once again, it, it works just fine. In this case, we print out, um, we print out, um, oh, look at that. Um, well, Scott's working on that. Um, um, my maintenance and technical support services. Um, 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 yeah, so uh, here we have now a birthday event uh, going off on a periodic basis, and it's robust in the situation that where the mother is null. So this, what we saw here is very typical of online, of, of sort of cases where uh, something is going wrong in a big way. In other words, it just stops and it puts the so-called um, stack dump to the stack trace to the, uh, to the message. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have someone who's trained in computer science, um, they can often make uh, considerable sense of that and turn it into a lot. And I would hope that even people who are coming to this for the first time will realize they can learn a lot from this. I'll give you another hint about this. You'll notice that you don't just look at the last line to put you in the right place. Take a look at the second to last line. Let's suppose we we didn't know what was going on here. The second to last line is telling you quite a bit as well. It's telling that you're dealing with a timeout event which is occurring. Okay? So the, the problem is something to do with a timeout event. It has something to do with a null value here. And fortunately, this does link you to a place, in this case, which is meaningful. But sometimes, to get a flavor of why this is occurring, it's helpful to kind of look further down and try to get some sense some sense of context here, okay? Um, uh, some sense of what the um, uh, of what what's going on just prior to um, to what's happening here. Now, uh, I'll talk in a few minutes about uh, a debugger, which will let you actually um, catch that place where it occurs and look for problems. But uh, often, this sleuthing process is the most important part. So the most Important elements that I want to emphasize, localizing the problem, simplifying the model and any input until you discover the minimum amount that's required to reproduce that error. The minimum that's required in your model to still give it this error. That will often give you a real hint as to, to what's going on. Okay? So save away the original model, compare good and bad versions. So if you get one that's working and one that isn't working, what, what are the differences between them? Note what does and does not work, does not lead to the error continuing. Or vice versa. 
experiment. And, um, and this experimenting often involves inserting some additional things in your model to record information. For example, to print out when one event fires, when a different event fires, when, when um, a transition is taken, or when you enter a point. You want to know, just before something goes wrong, what's going on? And to do that, you will often mark them all up by inserting things that will say, I'm here, I got here, what have you. And, and you look, which of them just occurred or, or printed out at the time that this, this error occurred. Um, eventually, it can be very useful to observe the model state, the situation at, at points preceding the error. And you can do this with the AnyLogic debugger or with an external debugger known as the Eclipse debugger that we can attach to AnyLogic. Um, and you want to read error messages. Don't, don't treat the error message from any logic as useless. They may puzzle you, but see if you can just look for anything that may give you a hint as to what's going on in the name. And if you're totally flummoxed, write to one of the TAs or, or, <laughs> or, or someone else. Bring someone in who has some, a bit of, uh, uh, maybe had, that you know in your social network that might uh, have some, um, some experience. But try to pay attention and realize, even if you don't understand really what they mean in total, you may be able to get some hints from them, okay? Um, talking with someone about issues can be great, performing peer reviews, having someone look over your code. It's really valuable anyway. And if you're having a problem, it's even more valuable, because they may be able to spot the problem, the source of the problem. But even if they don't come help you identify what the source of this problem is, they may be able to help you improve the quality of all help you be able to totally do a side run around the problem. So that might be a great time to bring someone in, kind of look over your model and give suggestions or comments. It spreads, as I said, understanding, spreads best practices. Um, you understand, uh, get advice from them, then you get understanding from you. Helps them be more useful for future reviews of the model if they have this background. Um, and generally, it's, it's something which um, can aid you in, in creating a, a high quality model anyway. Um, and so specify and investigate the, the, the top hypotheses. Um, so any logics researcher and professional editions contains debuggers. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you could use an external debugger and a platform called Eclipse to attach to any logic. Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to, uh, to show that as part of this morning's presentation. If people are really interested, I'd be glad to show it to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, this uh, ABM model with birth death is specifically set up so that it has a um, uh, it it has a excuse me it's not this version there's a separate version of it that's available on the O drive that's set up to allow you to attach a debugger to it um, debugging um, as we said is the process of locating and fixing bugs uh, the most valuable thing that that is is sort of the the earliest uh, um, the easiest thing to do is to put output, to insert things into your model doing tracing or logging, things that kind of uh, report what's going on right now. So um, what this requires doing is putting in trace LNs. So go through your model and, and transitions or entry states, you know, entry actions for states, put in trace LNs saying, I got here, I got here, this thing happened. And then again, look when the error occurs, what happened just before it. It often gives you a hint as to, to what's going on. The problem is this does require time-consuming markup and demarkup. And that's where Winchell's um, uh, aspect J mechanism that he presented could be very useful because it can help us automatically just say, trace all transitions going on now, or report all entries into states, or s show me all messages sent, or or report all people being brought into existence or destroyed. Question in the back, no sir. So, so generally speaking, what you're doing at this stage is you are putting in things like on a transition. Maybe you want to report all deaths that have occurred. So, so I could either put something in here to be trace LN, you know. Um, uh, a death occurred from natural causes, um, uh, something like that. Um, or I could even say two person 
and, and give my own name so it's inserted there. This would be the sort of logging that you can insert. Um, alternatively, you might you might put it in um, put it in the entry point to the state. Um, gosh, that looks ugly as sin. I did not write that code. Um, um, uh, okay, so you, you could put it. You know, um, uh, I I became um, susceptible or something like that. And instead of I, I would even put you know, this became susceptible. So what I'm saying is that it, it'll print out the person's uh, identification information. You say they became a susceptible person. So then you have just a trace over time of all these things going on. And the key question is at the time the real error occurred, like the null pointer exception or whatever, which of these are most recent? Because that will give you some hint as to what's gone on just before that, the context in short of the error. It lets you kind of forensically identify, sort of like you, if the car crash occurred, you want to know what was occurring just before that, like who was passing, where did, the, where did the vehicles go, so you ask witnesses to comment, you look at the tire tracks and you analyze where did people skid. That's what this is all about. It's sort of forensics to let you track down what happened, what was the cause of it, and, and seek remedy to that. Does that make sense? So, so we're talking here about a somewhat tedious process of inserting these things. But in the grand scheme of things, ladies and gentlemen, compared to what you'd have to do in repast or compared to what you'd have to do um, you know, in other frameworks or compared to trying to do it without these things, it's, a, it's well worth it. Going and inserting sort of formulaic things, you know, sometimes what I do is I, I even do something like this. I do you know, number one for one transition, number two for another, and then I can just see, okay, which, which one has occurred. So it's very, very quick to mark it up. But do this on a saved version of the model, separately saved, so you don't have to go back and remove all those in the final model. You know, when, you, when you fix the bug, you can just identify what the bug is, go back and fix it in the original version, and go on. You don't have to go remove these things. Winchell's tool um, basically takes care of automatically inserting these sort of things so that it can record this whole class of things automatically. And that means you don't have to go to every state chart and mark it up to say, record this transition, record that transition with a trace LN. But trace LN is your friend. It's perhaps, perhaps your foremost friend in debugging because it lets you understand what happened, okay? And even people who are m absolute masters at debugging will use print statements as probably their key tool. If you look at uh, Carnahan and Plower's book, um, for example, um, uh, they they comment that you know a, a debugger is a great tool to have. It's 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 really nice, but you use it in maybe 10% of the cases, which are really tricky. Other than that, you you put in these trace statements, these trace LN statements, for example, um, in their day and age, is printf statements, and and that that sort of describes what's going on. Okay, okay. Um, so you can do output to the console in red using this statement. I had mentioned that before. Um, System.error.println and, and give it some string. And that will actually print it in red if, if you want to highlight it. So for example, um, if you want to highlight certain messages, you can, you can do that here, okay? Um, um, right. Um, so you, you may also want to use any logics very powerful mechanisms for inserting widgets into your model. For example, when you push a button, make something happen. Um, uh, when, you, when you click a mouse, make something happen. Maybe that will let you reproduce the problem really quickly. You, you get it to do something that will cause the problem to happen. Um, and uh, that will help you uh, track it down. So you can you know, do some specific things when um, interacting them. So, um, Right, so I have custom reporting and this sort of thing. There's a framework called Log4j that's a logging framework that can be very interesting and, and I may get Winchell to, to do some work with that. But basically, you could have your model logging all the time, it's just some runs, it runs, it, it prints out less information, other runs it prints out a lot, and you could flexibly adjust that um, within your model. This is something we're, we're investigating. Um, and you could have it print that information out to different places. In some versions of this, and you'll find me online, show how to use the Eclipse debugger with any logic. Uh, the idea here is that you can set 
they'll call breakpoints. And this is an important concept, folks. So if we have some code uh, for a model, um, this is a particularly simple example, um, uh, current age, but maybe I'll do it instead of perform birth. This is a, a method which we discussed yesterday. I could go in the debugger and with the any built in any logic debugger, I could right click here and I could basically set a breakpoint here. And what a breakpoint means is that whenever execution reaches this point, when the model's running, whenever it hits this point, it'll stop and say, Tell me what to do. And I could then look at who the mother is, I could look at what the probability was of the offspring. What's really powerful is that with the functionality that that any logic is built to talk, you can set it, for example, to stop at this point only when the mother is null, or stop at this point um, when it's it's the person, the current person is, is uh, has ID number such and such, which maybe you identified from your print statements as being the person on whom the model crashes. So you could stop it at a certain point, and then you could kind of forensically investigate what's going on. You could step it, step by step by step, observing what's going on, maybe you know, until right up to the point where it crashes. And then it'll give you a hint as to what's going on right then. I don't have time to demonstrate this um, uh, here, um, but but I do provide an example which you can uh, attach to the Eclipse debugger, and myself or one of my TAs can um, can help show this to you if there's if there's interest. So here we can, for example, have this illustration. We can set a breakpoint. We can set a breakpoint when a message is sent or what have you, and we can catch it and we can ask for information about what's going on. Big deal though with breakpoints of the sort that you're talking about, unfortunately now available in code, is that you can stop, you can step, step by step, and you can ask what's going on. You can go look at the values of all variables, see what's going on to this point. You can even change the va values of variables and see if it dies then, for example. And this can help quite a bit in sleuthing difficult cases. But for most people in this room, I would say if you get to the point where you can't figure out exactly what's going on from print messages, um, uh, you may want to you may want to talk with someone who has some extra computer background to get them to to, to sort of uh, help walk through, or or um, provide a copy of your model to someone so they can help you sleuth these things down. It literally might save a factor a significant factor of, of time, hours and hours. Um, and speak to the strengths of people um, from, from technical background, okay? So um, they're very, very powerful things you can do with it. 
and any logic does support them, but they're not to be uh, taken lightly. You can find my online videos for, for more details. Um, so I, I have sort of a description of how this can be used. Okay. Um,